big corporation, and is there a way with to to safeguard from using the term blogger as a as a protection? Who wants to field that one? Well, he asked what the FCC would do. Are you, oh, okay, I was going to see whether you were getting a contract from Fox or something. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, from from the FEC perspective, that's a obviously a tough one. Uh, that's more in the nature, almost of a um, a, a, a political science question uh, in in many ways. But I mean, I think there are some there are some amazingly difficult issues out there. We uh, we are seeing all sorts of uh, changes in the media environment. You're seeing. Um, uh, what used to be pretty much news oriented uh, corporations being acquired by non news corporations and so you 're starting to have questions about whether or not the traditional media is really um, uh, reflecting the traditional media role or whether they 're more uh, subject to the control of a parent corporation that might have its own distinct interests and so um, I can see already we 've seen a, a vast for, uh, array of different kinds of activities undertaken by bloggers. I mean, already, and, and that's really just exploded in the last election cycle. So I think that as it expands, you can anticipate that uh, campaigns, party committees, others that are interested in election results are going to say, wait a minute, I want to jump on this bandwagon and I'm willing to put big money into it. And I think as um, Mike pointed out, you know, there's going to be a little tension there because the blogger community doesn't sort of right now view itself as kind of a vehicle for the big guys with the big money to come in. So, uh, you know, at, at a certain point, uh, these things do intersect with these issues we've talked about already. What is a, a, a media entity entitled to the media exemption? Um, under what circumstances does uh, this rule we've had about use of corporate facilities for individual volunteer activity apply to someone who's actually uh, working together with some other folks doing some blogging? I mean, they're there. The issues are already there. So, uh, I, you know, I, if you've got some insight, if anybody out there has insight on these kinds of distinctions, uh, very helpful. Let us know so that when we do this rule, <laughs> we do it right. If I could just add one thing to your question, you mentioned this idea, and I think it's probably likely that as more traffic and attention and influence is directed towards blogs, that some of them will get bigger and take on more of a corporate feel. Certainly, uh, their balance books will look a little different. Um, but I think what's important to remember that in terms of uh, our election regulations and, and this goal of, of fair and clean elections, is that even if some of those blogs get tremendous, it doesn't stop anybody else's ability to speak. It doesn't stop anybody else from starting their own. And simply by being more creative or louder, I guess you could say, more shrill, uh, they're going to get just as much attention. And I, I think that one of the interesting things is that you don't really see a lot of data or you don't really see a lot of examples where influence among blogs has been purchased. Well, and I mean, to, to take what you've just said, take it one step further. I mean, not only, you know, if, if a blog on the right becomes incredibly powerful, not only can there be a blog on the left to balance it out, but, but for a vast majority of Internet communications, the, the listener has made an affirmative choice to say, I want to go there. I want to hear what this blogger is saying or this website is saying or whatever. And, and so, and someone else you know is going to make a different um, affirmative choice but it, but it does draw into question the 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 pro even the prohibition on on you know exxon mobile um, speaking i mean if exxon mobile wants to say its political piece on the on the net arguably you know why shouldn't it be allowed to them? I and i'm i'm not really making that kind of proposal now but just to kind of put on the table that really you know even the some of the fundamental assumptions about about speaking when you're talking about the internet don't really apply because ExxonMobil can't do much to freeze out some other speaker on the internet. Well, I want to thank our panelists and I want to thank the audience and I want to close by reminding everyone that as arcane as these rules and laws seem, they can have great effects on the capacity of our nation 
uh, to talk about our public affairs and, and to govern ourselves. Think of what AM radio was like before the Fairness Doctrine was abolished and after the Fairness Doctrine was abolished. These rules could have similar impact. So I urge all of you to remember not just us, but more importantly, our websites, uh, pewinternet.org, fec.gov, redstate.org, and cdt.org. And let us hear from you during the next 60 days, starting April 4th. Thank you. <laughs>